the next day and the team take their first excursion from the clubhouse for a trip to one of the most infamous gyms in the capital. Repton Boys Boxing Club in Bethnal Green has a rich history and has been responsible for helping many young men from East London turn their lives around. I'd rather come to a place like this and go to a fancy gym because you, you know there's been some stories that have been told here and you know there's people that come down here that are real. You, you don't get no fake people that you do on those like fancy boxing gyms like Fitness First or something like that. You get some real people down here. You just know in here, right, that some proper hard graft is done away from the, the big stadiums, the big cameras. This is where it all takes place. And the man who is to train them, the former WBO Intercontinental Champion, with a professional record of 19 fights, 15 knockouts, and only one loss, Mark Prince. All right, over to you, Mark. Thanks I'm going to work your ass today, boys. And after that, we're going to sit down and relax and have a good talk. Talk about each other's lives and see what we could take from each other, grow from there, yeah? Because I come from the same situation that you guys come from. Where, you know, you come to that point in your life where you recognise if you continue going down that road, where's it going to end up? So you have to go, you're at a crossroads right now, the way I see it. Where you've got to start making up your minds if you want to continue and it's going to end up going nowhere or you want to make something of yourself. It's not just going in and swinging haymakers, it's about trying to give some of these boys a little bit of control, mental control on the rugby field, they're going to get smacked. What do you do? Well, we're hoping to make sure they maintain their control, but today, we're going to push them to the limit. Let's go! You know, my muscles were killing me. I started cramping up from like after 10 minutes and uh, didn't feel great, but you know, that's, that's the whole point of getting fit. One lad who catches Mark Prince's eye is Kevin from Barking. I'll give it to my man. I'll tell you why. You see when he came to his second lap, he was busting his leg. I think he pulled a muscle in it, bro. Yeah. yeah. And he just wanted to stop. Yeah, he didn't want to do no more. And I told him to keep going and everyone encouraged him. And he jogged it out and he kept going. But you know, when you're training and it hurts and you got a way out, you pull the muscle, he kept going, he worked through it. Now we could take that break. But my man, big up, yeah? With advice ringing in their ears, the boys glove up for some intense bag work. You've got a man over there in life, you're always gonna have somebody next to you, but the, per the achievement is within yourself. It's what you can do, all right, guys? Up, up, up one, down, up one, down. I want you going into the pit. Down, get your ass down. Make sure you're on your tiptoes. Please bend on your toes. Come on, two down. Well, you can make your own mind up to do something that's hurtful, to achieve something that is good for you. Now, this is good for you. Take it down, man. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. Beat it. Beat it. Now, what you're saying to us, like talking to us about going through things in life that we're going to need to carry on, even though there'll be obstacles coming up, there'll be barriers, but we have to break through the barriers basically and just push and just try through and just be our best what we can do. Let's do this. You guys are used to looking hard on the road. You guys are used to having your body or your mouth make you the man. But now you're in it and you've got to show who the real man is in you. I can't see him turning up. Where is he? Is he only good when you're shutting? Is he only good when you're out road and you've got something in your back off to pull out? Is that the only time when you're a man and you look hard? But when you come in there to do some work, you cry like little bitches and there's no man in there. Get in position, work hard, show your power, show your strength. Good. Take a break. Mark has been brought in for more than the boys realise. Four years ago, his own son was tragically stabbed to death and now he's on a mission to eradicate knife crime and stop other people feeling the same pain he has been through. So going to the hospital and being called into a room to hear news that they couldn't 
make your son's heart work again. And they opened up his chest and they physically held his heart and pumped it. And I met the man and hugged the man that opened my son's chest and was trying to keep him alive. And he couldn't do it. For a second, I thought I could punch through walls. I, I, I tried to hurt myself. I hit, I hit walls with more power than I've knocked out the 15 guys that I've knocked out in my boxing career. It just messed me up. It messed me up. But um, I still didn't retaliate. There was a time at the hospital that I was just collecting news. Where's the guy's address? Where's the guy? Blah, blah, blah. All I wanted to do was murder. I'll go to his house. As Soon as anyone opens the door, mom, dad, any family, poop, poop, poop. I had it in vision, I'm gonna do this. Rare, rare, rare. I feel that God intervened in my thoughts and my actions and what I wanted to do and just said no. So I've got three boys left and I've got two girls. Um, they need me. Who's gonna hug them and hold them when they're missing their brother? If I go into house and feel, well, I'll get revenge for Kai and you can't kill nobody in my family, I'll have you back. That all makes sense, but my actions don't. We don't have the power. We haven't given that authority to take life, guys. We need to focus on ourselves and our purpose. And sometimes things happen so bad, it can throw you of thinking realistically and thinking what's best for you. But hold on, I'm here to tell you that if I can do it, you can do it. Remember that. God bless you, man. I've got nothing but love for you. Respect, man. Lovely, lovely. Life, oh, good, man. man. You don't make some changes, man. Make some changes, bro, yeah? yeah. No more bird, say that. No more bird, whoever's gone inside, you ain't doing that no more. You ain't going on that journey. Bless you, bro. He wanted to, wanted to kill the people who'd killed his son, but he found the strength not to do that. And these guys were just sat there in total awe of him. And then when the, when the session finished, they just couldn't get enough of him. They wanted to spend time with him, to be with him. A real role model. And for, for me and Scott, it's been a real eye-opener because he just got right down on their level straight away. He understood them. There's, there's me and Scott, a Welsh lad and a Northerner coming onto their patch. And it's, it's taught us, it's taught me and Scotty that we're going to have to work hard to win their trust over and understand what makes them tick. But uh, after all the negatives of the first few days, to come here, it's been a massive, massive boost for the lads themselves. And I think we will only take steps forward from now on. Next week on the School of Hard Knocks, latecomers force a whole team into a series of punishments and the lads visit the police to experience some terrifying training techniques.